Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. Acquisitiveness is one of the less noble human characteristics. It isn't the poor or deprived who manifest this failing. Generally, it's the well-to-do, the educated. Owning and having seems to spawn avarice. And from avarice to greed to death and beyond death are the steps of the story we're about to unfold. Miss Lombard. When you were looking at that painting, the Leonardo da Vinci, your face was such a mask of pain and unhappiness. I should have thought actually owning such a work would inspire and delight you. No, I hate it. A glorious work like that? You hate it? To you, it may be a masterpiece. To me, it is evil. That painting is ruining my life. mystery drama, The House of the Dead Heart, adapted from a story by Edith Wharton, especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr., stars Christopher Tabori. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What makes certain people have a certain way? What to you and I might appear a quirk of nature is natural and appropriate to others. Take Paul Winant, for example a graduate student pushing for his Ph.D. His father manufactures shoes. His mother does the bookkeeping. Paul wants no part of that business. Music, literature, and art are his life. His parents think Paul is lazy and crazy. Paul thinks their lives are monotonous and tedious. You see... My mom and dad are real New England home folk. Work hard all day long and fall asleep at night. And they also believe God's Garden of Eden is right in your own backyard. So when I became an art major and then went back to school for my Ph.D., they gave me plenty of flack. But the day I said I wanted to go to Rome for the summer, they acted like I, like I was going to walk on the moon. So I thought I'd talk it over with Professor Dalton. To conclude today's lecture, it's unfortunate that so much of Leonardo da Vinci's work has been lost. We know of several paintings that once existed because they've been mentioned in letters. And fortunately, we do have the Mona Lisa. Now, uh, on Monday, our final lecture before your term papers are handed in, we'll discuss Leonardo's belief that science and fantasy do interact. Mathematics and the supernatural. Dismissed. Uh, excuse me, may I, may I see you for a moment, Professor Dalton? Yes, be in my office in ten minutes, Paul. I'll have time then. So what do I do, Professor? You're saying that... I shouldn't pay any attention to my parents. Paul, it's your life. Sure, they're concerned, but in the long run, what you do with it is your responsibility. <laughs> That's what I keep telling them. Mm. Have you mapped out your itinerary? You're not only going to Rome. I thought Naples, Venice, Milan, Florence... Florence, oh. Is, is Siena on your list? Siena? Well, no. Oh, Paul... You've got to go there. From Florence, it's only an hour and a half by motor coach. And there's an old friend of mine you must see. Oh, sure. Someone you know personally? I'd, I'd love to. Good. His name is Dr. Arthur Lombard. We got our PhDs together uh, years ago. One summer, like you, he visited Italy. But he never came back. 
Married an American girl. Has a daughter, I believe. This is 20 years ago, and he's been there ever since. Lombard's an encyclopedia of the Italian Renaissance. But that's not the only reason I think you should see him. He owns a Leonardo. Oh, you're kidding. No. A real, genuine Leonardo da Vinci? If he says it is, it is. He won't allow anyone to photograph it because the picture could be sold and commercialized. The French and the Italian governments have offered him the sky for it, but he's turned them down. Do you think he'll let me see it? I hope so. If he won't let you photograph it, please write out a detailed description. Will you, Paul? Oh, you bet. Someone who owns a real Leonardo. I can't wait. I'll give you a letter of introduction before you go. I know the street he lives on, but not the house number. He must be fairly well known in Siena. My letters reach him without any trouble. You haven't seen him in 20 years? Well, I was in Siena three years ago and stayed with them. You go there, Paul, with my blessings. Professor, you've made me feel a lot better about pursuing my interests. I love my parents, and I hate to disappoint them. But I'm just not ready to make a life commitment. I do know that making shoes, isn't it? <laughs> I envy you. A summer in Italy. Three weeks later, I was on my way to Italy. And as the weeks went by, and it got more and more exciting, seeing ancient civilizations, enjoying the legacy left the world by masters of sculpture and paintings, Naples, Venice, Milan, Rome... It was only when I arrived in Florence that a bell rang, just as if Professor Dalton had rung it. An hour and a half by motor coach, he'd said. So the next day, I was sitting in a cafe in Siena on the Piazza del Campo, studying a street map. Oh, excuse me. I think you dropped this envelope. Oh. Oh, oh thanks. Yes, I did. You speak English very well. <laughs> I'm not Italian. English? No, American. I'll be darned. You don't look it. So am I. Paul Wyatt. David Michaels. You live here in Siena? Well, for the time being. I should go back home, but I can't bring myself to. Home? Cincinnati. There's something about Italy that must be catching. How so? Well, you're an American and you're finding it hard to leave. I have an art professor back home. He was telling me about a friend of his who came over here years ago, settled down, and never went back to the States. Matter of fact, uh, he's the one this letter's for. Dr. Lombard. But the only address I have is the... the Via Papa Guillo. Oh, well, I, I, I was trying to find my way there on this map here. Well, the number of Dr. Lombard's house is 13. You could almost walk there from here. You know him? Oh, well, he's very well known in Siena. He lives in a house called the House of the Dead Heart. Oh, what a strange name. And it got its name from a piece of marble shaped like a heart which is over the front door. It's centuries old. Thank you very much. Number 13, huh? Mm-hmm. Listen, I, I was thinking maybe, since you know the man... Well, maybe I'd better wait and see how he greets me. Well, I don't know the man, not personally. How about a drink, David? I owe you one for being so helpful. Another time. I've got to be going. I, I, I don't know how long I'll be staying in Siena, but perhaps we could meet again. Well, I'm usually at this cafe on the piazza about noon. Fine. I will look for you. By the way, uh... When you get to the doctor's house, ring the bell twice. Oh, I see. Well, no, I, I, I don't. Why twice? It's the custom. Yes, what is it? Is this the house of Dr. Lombard? Yes, it is, honey. You're an American, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, don't stand there on ceremony. Come on in. A Yankee American, think of that. Oh, I'm so sick of answering the door every day, you have no idea. We have this Italian cook and a husband. Now, don't ask me what they do all day. You can never find them. My husband's not very well, so I have to answer the door. Uh, this way. Living room is one flight up. I brought with me a letter of introduction from Professor Dalton. Sammy Dalton? Well, how is he? The doctor's just finishing his lunch. Oh, he'll be delighted. Sammy Dalton. 
Oh, you know, my husband and Sam went to school together. Arthur? Arthur, who do you think I brought upstairs? Uh, what did you say your name was? Paul Wyant. He's a friend of Sam Dalton's. Uh, a student of Professor Dalton's. How do you do, Dr. Lombard? Hello. I brought a letter of introduction for you. Oh, let me have it. So you're a student. You look a little old to be a student. How old are you? I'm 26. I'm taking my Ph.D. in art history. Are you? When I was a girl, I came here from Virginia to study art. And I met Arthur, and we married and settled down. And then he taught at the American school right here. And we never went back. Oh, come in, Sibylla. There's a young man here from America, a Yankee. But that doesn't matter anymore. He's a student of Dr. Dalton's. How do you do? Uh, hi, I, I'm, I mean, hello. Uh, this is my daughter, Sibylla. Our only child, our pride and joy. <laughs> oh, it's a nice letter. <laughs> Old Sam writes a good letter. <clears throat> well, I'm glad to see you, Mr. Wild. Uh, we lead a quiet life here. We don't see many people. But any friend of Professor Dalton's is more than welcome. And my wife and daughter often talk of him. When was he visiting us? I can't remember. Uh, was it two years ago? Three, Father. Really? <laughs> a wonderful house guest. Helped out everywhere like it was his own home. <laughs> and now, uh, <clears throat> you want to see my Leonardo? Do I? <laughs> that's the way they all behave. That's, that's why they all come here. The bell rings every day, but I send them all off. While I live, not one unworthy eye shall desecrate that picture. Father, Mr. Wyatt... I know, I know, Sibylla. I won't do my friend Sam Dalton the injustice to suppose he'd send an unworthy representative. <laughs> Paul, I'm going to call you Paul. Oh, I wish you would. Your professor writes me he would like a description of the painting for a book he's writing on the unknown Leonardo. Well, so be it. You should describe it, if you can. Yes, the professor wants me to take away all the impressions I can. You're welcome to take away all you can carry, Paul. That is, um, if he has your permission, Sibylla, it really belongs to my daughter. Well, let's go to the gallery before the light fails. The key's in the drawer, Sibylla. Mrs. Lombard, after you. Uh, no, 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 my, my, my wife won't come with us. She, she has no feeling for art. Uh, Italian art, that is. We always raised horses at home in Richmond. I was into dressage before I was barely out of diapers. I simply had no time to develop other aspects of my life, honey. Horses. You can imagine my total disappointment when I came to Florence to see the statue of David and discovering he was not on a horse. <laughs> An adorable Philistine, my wife. Arthur says things about me he doesn't think I understand. But I do, Mr. Wyant. And I put up with them. Why shouldn't I speak my mind? I'm going to be dead in six months. <laughs> A strange, sardonic man Dr. Lombard is. And his daughter, Sibylla, who has hardly opened her mouth. And Mrs. Lombard, who seems restless and unrequited. A stranger in Siena. And somewhere in this house of the dead heart is an unknown painting by the great Leonardo da Vinci, which will pull at the lives of those we have met as strongly as the pull of the moon on the tides. I shall return shortly with Act Two. We are in Siena, Italy, ancient city of narrow streets streaking across steep hills, its nine gates keeping out most of the 20th century. Down the street from a 14th century world, which inspired Richard Wagner to compose Parsifal, is the house of the dead heart, and in it an American family, a visitor, and a virtually unseen masterpiece that is about to be unveiled. I'd never before felt such an inner excitement as when Dr. Lombard and his beautiful daughter led me down a stone passage to a small door with a heavy lock. Inside a carpeted room, bare of furniture, hung a velvet curtain. A skylight let in the golden afternoon sun. I felt like an acolyte about to assist in some strange worship. There's a little too much light, Sibylla. Draw the silk curtains. That, that'll do. 
Paul, you see the pomegranate design on the carpet? Place yourself there. Keep your left foot on it. Now, Sibella, pull back the velvet. What do you see, Paul? Incredible. Incredible. Well, now, you must know this Leonardo is not mine. It belongs to my daughter. Some time ago, Sibella inherited from her grandmother a, a sizable legacy. Tell our visitor how you came by the painting, Sibella. On the far side of the piazza, a house was being torn down. I had a friend who knew the contents were for sale. They wanted a small fortune for the Leonardo, and I used all my inheritance and bought it. But, 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 but say why you had to buy it, Sibella. I could not help myself. <laughs> you hear that, Paul? Sibylla made it possible for me to spend the last days, weeks of my life in communion with one of the world's masterpieces. May I just look at it and, and say nothing? I'll lose the impressions if I use words. Uh, well spoken by a true lover of art. Oh, you're very fortunate, Miss Lombard, to possess anything so perfect. Yes, it is considered very beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. That poor, ungainly, worn-out, overworked word. <laughs> it's used for anything these days. Automobiles, golf games, skyscrapers. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, never let me hear that, that, that word again. I, I, I... <laughs> I can't breathe. Mr. Wyatt, help me take Father out of here. This is too much for him. He's ill. Miss Lombard, how's your father feeling now? He's lying down. He's better. Mr. Wyatt? Oh, no, no. You can call me Paul if you like. No, no, that won't be necessary. Please listen to me. Yes. Do you have a message for me? A, a message? No, I... Are you sure? Look in your handkerchief pocket. My handkerchief pocket? Yes. It's, it, it's just my handkerchief. What is it? Well, why does that disturb you? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I'm very sorry about your father. He has a weak heart. Any excitement is bad for him. I have to take care of him. Mother doesn't know how. I think I'd better go. I'll come back, well, perhaps tomorrow or, or some other time. That's what I came in to say. He's asked for you. For me? Now? Yes. Mother's inside with him. They both want to speak to you. Before I go in, Miss Lombard, I'd, I'd like to ask you something. It's very hard for me to say this. You were going to say, why am I not as enthusiastic over the Leonardo as my father? I was going to say, it wasn't the painting that left me without words. It was the look on your face. It shows? Yes, it shows. A look of such pain and unhappiness. Am I mistaken? I, I hope so. Mr. Wyatt, what you saw on my face is that... that painting is ruining my life. I may never escape from it. Ever. It's all right, Paul. Come on in. How are you, my boy? <laughs> the stupid business. My <clears throat> my breathing's all right now, it's loud and clear. Quite recovered. Arthur, feeling much better. Uh, uh, sit sit by my feet, Paul. Uh, I have a peculiar presentiment about you, as if I'd met a long lost son. Do you feel that, Sibylla? Paul is like a brother. I don't know. I watched you. Didn't you sense you were in the presence of something holy, my boy? That room is a chapel. The sight of that picture is a sacrament. I never had a son, but I have one now. You must feel as I do. You've made me feel very much at home and welcome. I can say that. May I come back and see the painting again? No, not, not again. Now. Let me up. 
help me, Virginia. Arthur, do you think you should? Your heart. My heart tells me to get up. <clears throat> Come on, Paul. I'll unlock the secret and show you it is all secrets and no secrets. Sibylla, have you the key? We go now. Pull back the curtain, Sibylla. Say nothing, son. I shall tell you what there is. The central truth of existence. Art, beauty, love, religion. You sense that, don't you? I have given my life to a study of the Renaissance, and yet, standing here in front of this Leonardo, I am ignorant. It could mean nothing... Yet it means all things, all ages, past and to come. You excite yourself, Father. Oh, easy for you to talk. It's bad for you. Now, now, Paul, now. I want to know what you see. I see pain. There's a sword piercing a body. Blood is flowing. It's overwhelming, yes. But I don't see mystery and beauty in this painting. Where is it? These colors, those people? They're reaching out and hurting me. What does the canvas show, really? Stabbing, and blood, and the feet of Christ on the cross. Ominous black clouds, the eternal punishment of man. Yes, it's a masterpiece of horror, but not inspiration. Get out. Get out. You have no eyes, nothing... You see death in blood. I see life. Get out. Tell your professor he sent the wrong messenger. You're lucky I am not a king. If I were a messenger, you'd lose your head. It was an unfortunate end to the day. That unhappy man and his unhappy daughter were all I could remember. Not the Italian masterpiece I'd come to Siena to see. I went to the bar in the Hotel Continental where I was staying and ordered a whiskey. May I join you? Oh, David Michael. Yeah. Yes, sure, of course. Sit down. Thanks. Oh, I've just spent a horrible few hours. I'm glad to see you. Unnerving. Here, have a drink. No, thanks. I, I knew you were there. I, I followed you. To Dr. Lombard? You did? Why? I think you have a message for me in your pocket. I do? Look in your handkerchief pocket. Upper left-hand corner of your suit. Oh, yeah. So there is. And all folded up. It has your name on it. David. Who put it there? It's the only way Sibylla and I can reach one another. Why, well, yes, she asked me. She asked me did I have a message for her. Is that what she meant? I tried placing a note for her in your pocket when you left the cafe, but I wasn't quick enough. You give notes to strangers to carry. Exactly. The telegraph boy, the grocer, the plumber, any visitor. Every day I write the bill a note of love and hope. And I look for someone who's going to the house, slip it into his pocket, and tell him to ring twice. It's the signal that the visitor may have word from me. Do you mind explaining all this? Well, Sibylla and I met a year ago. In fact, it was I who discovered the Leonardo and persuaded her to use all her inheritance to buy it. As it turned out, the painting has come between us. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I want to read her note. Mm. Mm. Yes. Well, I'll read it to you. David is getting worse. I am being strangled. Light ten candles tomorrow. S. S for Sibylla. Mm-hmm. Light and candles, I... Oh, well, at the church of San Domenico, where uh, where we first met. But how has it come between you? It infected her father. It's bewitched him. Sibylla feels if she leaves and takes it with her, which she has every right to do, it will kill him. He has such a bad heart now. She keeps putting me off. Wait, wait. So I stay in Siena. I'm forbidden to see her. She is not allowed out of the house. We write notes. That's our life. Yeah, but I don't understand in, in this day and age why she just doesn't walk out the door. I think her father would kill her if she tried to walk out the door. 
No, she'd have to lock him up and then run. Why else do you think I hang around Sienna? I'm hoping. I can't bring myself to believe it's hopeless. The next day, I took my old table at the cafe in the Piazza del Campo. I addressed an envelope to Dr. Lombard, number 13, via Papa Guillo Siena, and began to write. I would apologize for my rudeness and crudeness and ask to be permitted to see the painting again. You see, I felt I had let down Professor Dalton. I'd never be able to explain to him what had happened. There you are, honey. You haven't left Sienna. All's right with the world. Oh, Mrs. Lombard. <laughs> you know, I was just about to write the doctor a letter and apologize. You see, I've addressed the envelope. Oh, don't bother. He sent me here to apologize to you. He? To me? Oh, yes. Arthur's lonely. He does silly things, says silly things. You have to understand him. You see, I thought I should get back and see the painting again. I, I promised Professor Dalton that I'd describe it in detail for his book. Do you think that the doctor would let me take a flash picture? Well, you can ask him, but don't bring a camera. <laughs> Sibylla, Arthur, I brought the gentleman back. If you'll excuse me. I am so hot, I simply must take a cold bath. Paul, would you mind coming into this room off the hall with me? No, no, not at all. How is your father? Is he better? Oh, he's still asleep. He doesn't know you're here, I don't think, and I don't want to tell him yet. I must speak to you. I never have a chance to speak to anyone. It's so difficult. He watches me. Sabrina! Sabrina! Shh! Yes, Father? Did I hear someone come in? No, Father. Come and tell me when, when your mother returns with that Paul, will you? Oh, yes, yes, Father. He's going to find out any minute now. He'll be here. What can I do? Can you come again tomorrow morning about ten? Come here again? Yes. Make some excuse. A, a, a sketch pad. You, you didn't bring a sketch pad to make a, a drawing of the, of the Leonardo. And then tomorrow I'll, I'll unlock the door for you where the painting hangs. Father will come with you, of course, and... Then I'll go out the door and lock you both in. Lock us in that room? Is that what you mean? But don't you understand? It's the only way for me to leave this house if I'm ever going to do it. I'm to be locked in that room with your father and the Leonardo. Oh, I'll never have another chance. I'm watched every minute. The key will be returned by a safe person in, in half an hour, or perhaps sooner, as if it were all a mistake. I thought I heard voices. Ah, my son, Paul... <laughs> all is forgiven. Emotions, emotions. We're all victims. The painting. Shall we go and look at it again? Sibylla and David must have planned it out together, and I didn't like that. Light ten candles at the Church of San Domenico tomorrow. It was obvious. Ten o'clock, they meet and they run away. Well, if I'd had a hand in it, certainly Professor Dalton would never forgive me. That the unknown Leonardo in the possession of Dr. Lombard should mean two things to two people is quite possible. All his life, da Vinci himself made drawings of ugliness and beauty side by side, as though he were depicting the two halves of human coinage. So the blood drawn in this masterpiece could mean carnage to young Paul and the pulse of life to Dr. Lombard. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Time passes. Paul returns to graduate school, gets his Ph.D., but still is unable to direct his life. From time to time, he is plagued with phantom night sightings of the Lombard family in Siena. The dreams vary, but they all begin the same way. Paul enters the front door of the House of the Dead Heart and, looking up, sees the ancient marble heart, bleeding thick red drops. He cannot rid himself of the nightmare. Paul Wyant, what brings you back here to the university? What are you doing with yourselves these days, hmm? Well, I haven't decided yet. I came to see you, Professor, because... 
How can I put it to you? When I was here at graduate school, I felt I was on the right track. By learning more and more, I would have a better chance to decide which road I should take. Mm Mm-hmm. And that hasn't occurred to you yet, hmm? I have this feeling now that somewhere along the way, somewhere I've been shunted off the rails. You know, Paul, I never told you this, but last year when you returned from Italy, you seemed to have lost your drive. Certainly in my classes. Oh, you passed because you knew the subject, not because you wanted to. I... I have these awful dreams. Oh? You want to talk about them? I dream I'm in that special room Dr. Lombard calls his gallery where the Leonardo hangs. He keeps saying over and over how happy he is living inside Da Vinci's creation. Inside it. And he goes on talking, and his daughter, Sibylla, a very beautiful, sad girl, 20, well, she's standing there. She's standing there the way she did in real life. And the picture begins to bleed. And Dr. Lombard is saying uh, the painting is a sacrament. And then Sibylla says, notice the modeling of the left hand. It recalls the hand of Mona Lisa. The embroidery of the cloak is symbolic. And these dreams are all alike. Well, no. But there's always blood. Always the marble heart over the front door... Bleeding. You've talked to nobody about this? Who who would understand? Mm, about Dr. Lombard, Paul. I don't know whether it's actual telepathy of some sort. Or perhaps there was something in the papers about it that I didn't see. He died, didn't he? You did see something in the papers, huh? Well, no, I, I, I just know. I, I've known it for... Well, I think I've known it for a month now. I wonder what happened to the painting. I wondered about that myself. And Sibylla. Why don't you drop them a line? I'll give you the address. I'm sure they'd be glad to hear from you. I know it by heart, Professor. 13 Via Papa Guillo. The House of the Dead Heart. The cloud of uncertainty is wrapped about me like a cocoon suddenly lifted. I knew what I must do. Indeed, had I done it months earlier, I might have lived easier. Do you understand? It was as if I had read a book, but closed it before I got to the last chapter. Now I had to open that book and find out how it all ended. Si, signore. You wish... uh... Uh, My name is Paul Wyatt. Uh, You're the editor of the American News in Siena? Yes, signore. Well, I'm trying to find out something about... Someone I knew here in Siena. Well, certainly, if, if I can help. Dr. Lombard. Does that name mean anything to you? <laughs> Does it mean? Dr. Lombard, the famous man with the Leonardo. He, he died, you know. Uh, yes. D- Does his widow still live at the... Oh, uh... yes, yes, yes. On the, the uh, via... Let me think. Via Papaguillo. The house of the dead heart. She's still there? Oh, yes. And they had a daughter, Sibylla. Ah, <laughs> You knew her? Well, we met briefly. Tragic story. Romeo and Juliet. She didn't marry? No. There was someone also an American like yourself. They were... uh, It's too bad. Tragic. He... he, David Michaels? Yes, that's the name. Uh, But we don't write about it. He married another American girl. And he went home to Cincinnati. Miss Lombard... She still lives in her father's house. Oh, yes. And the Leonardo. The Leonardo also is still there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't make myself walk the length of the Via Papaguillo and ring that doorbell. So, back to the familiar cafe on the piazza to fortify myself with a whiskey. When I got there, all the tables were occupied, except one... Way at the back, where a lady sat alone. As I got closer, I could see three empty glasses on the table and one in her hand. I beg your pardon. Uh, Are you? An American. 
Sit down, honey. Uh, are, are, are you Mrs. Lombard? You know me. Do I know you? Oh, Mrs. Lombard, I'm I'm Paul Wyant. Well, how do you do? You better have something to drink, honey. It makes this heat bearable. You don't remember me. Didn't you come to see my husband a long time ago? Not that long. A year and a half. I had a letter of introduction from Professor Dalton. Hmm. Sam Dalton. Of course. Sam Dalton. <laughs> An old dear friend. He was a house guest many years ago. Sam Dalton. <laughs> How is he? I saw him quite recently. He's very well, thank you. Sam. Names from the past. Sibylla and I. We often say we should go back. She's never been to America, you know. She was born right here. How is she? Sibylla? I don't know. She's very quiet. Sometimes days go by we don't talk. I think it has something to do with that painting. I was thinking of coming around to visit you if I could. If you could. I'll tell you what. As soon as you finish your drink, let you and I go home and surprise the bell. I didn't get around to ordering a drink. Well, that's perfect. Then we don't have to wait. I had to let the cook and houseman go. Uh, I'm afraid it's a little shabby. Since Arthur passed away, I haven't had the energy... Sibylla, I brought someone. Sibylla. Oh, there you are. Hello, Miss Lombard. Do you remember him, Sibylla? Paul. Oh, I never did know your last name. Why? Paul reminded me that Sam Dalton sent him. How is he? Oh, did I ask you that already? He's fine. I told him I was coming to Siena and that I would look you up. Miss Lombard. Yes? How have you been keeping yourself? I mean, well, do you still have the Leonardo? Would you care to see it? Oh, yes. It's an original Leonardo, you know. I'll get the key. I could not believe my eyes. In less than two years, this beautiful girl had grown old. She took the same key from the same secret drawer... Walked me down the stone passage to the padlocked door, unlocked it, and stood me on that special place on the carpet. The pomegranate. Left foot on it, please. How's that? Do you wish to see it now? Sure. So you couldn't part with it. What do you mean? I don't wish to be indelicate, but at one time... You thought I would sell it? I thought perhaps you thought it was a millstone around your neck. Oh, but you were right to keep it. It's too beautiful. You think so? It maddened me when I first saw it. I couldn't control myself. But now I realize the intense meaning in it. Beautiful. I never thought it beautiful. Really? Never? I hated it. Oh, no. He made me come into this room. I'd have to stand here like a museum guide. Notice the modeling of the left hand. It recalls the hand of the Mona Lisa. The embroidery on the cloak is symbolic. The sword and the blood and the flesh... I can't say any more, Daddy. Don't make me. It hurts. Miss Lombard. Sibylla. Are you all right? I'm not looking at it now. I can't bear to look at it. You can't force me to look. Did, did you wish me to close the curtain in front of it? I hate it. I've always hated it. But he would never let me. He will never let me now. You mean your, your father, Dr. Lombard, didn't wish you to part with the picture? No. He prevented me. He will always prevent me. Oh, I see. I see. You promised him before his death. No, I didn't promise anything. He died so suddenly he didn't have time to make me. He died, you see. And then, you see... Yes? 
I was free. I was perfectly free. Or so I thought, until I tried. Well, well, until you tried what? To disobey him. To sell the picture. Then I found it was impossible. I tried again and again. But he was always in the room with me. This room? Yes. Everywhere. Wherever I am in the house. And I can't lock him out. I can never lock him out now. I told you I'd never have another chance. Well, what can I say? It's too late. But you ought to have helped me that day. The human mind, especially of a sensitive soul, can only stand so much before breaking. All of those we have met have been tested. All have been found wanting. And some even unable to meet life. What other explanation can there be? Surely you're not one of those who believes in the power of pigments used by a painter 500 years ago. I'll return shortly. We humans delude ourselves into believing we can fathom most of the answers to life's mysteries. We claim that seeing is believing, and what we don't know won't hurt us. We scoff at UFOs, ghosts, thought transference, and much of the unexplained, and therefore the unscientific. And perhaps in that category belongs the post-mortem power of a masterpiece, a painting with a force of its own, like that of Dorian Gray. I personally go along with the thought that anything is possible, because I happen to know the ignorance of man is stupendous. Our cast included Christopher Tabori, Gordon Gould, E.V. Juster, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel.